I love that song. <laughs> I really do. Anyways, today we're going to talk about judges. And this is February the 20th. Can you believe we're almost over February already? And you know what? We're coming back to live Sunday school on March the 6th. I'm excited about that. But today we're going to look at the book of Judges. And what is Judges about? Well, it's named for the rulers whom God appointed to lead Israel after Joshua died. Remember, Joshua was the one, he took over from Moses and he led the people into the promised land. These judges, they ruled until Saul became Israel's first king. You know, although the people promised to obey God, they never did completely conquer the lands of Canaan that God had asked them to. And you know what? Soon, they turned away from the one true God, and they began to worship the gods that were in these nations. You know, in Judges, it's like a repeated pattern. Over and over, the people turned away from God, did what was evil in the sight of God, and each time they did this, God judged Israel by sending foreign nations to conquer them. Then the people would cry out to God, help us, help us, we're so sorry. And God would send a judge to rescue them. All in all, there were 12 judges, 11 men and one woman. And the most, fa but the most famous of those judges was Samson. And he used his great strength to rescue Israel. Well, you know, I, I tried to figure out who actually wrote the book of Judges, but it, I wasn't sure. There's some people who think that it might have been written by Samuel, but I have no confirmation of that. So where do we start with the book of Judges? Let's see. Well, like I said, the Israelites, they kept sinning. They'd go through phases of not worshiping God. God would get angry. He'd judge them, and then he'd send other countries to come in and take them captive. Then the people would say, oh, God, forgive us. We want to come back to you. So God would rescue them, and he'd give them a judge to help them. So they'd follow God for a while, and then they'd start disobeying God again. But we have Samson. Does anybody remember the story of Samson? Well, let me give you a little bit of information on him. Now, Samson's mom, she couldn't have children. But one day, the angel of the Lord appeared to her and told her that she would have a son. But she couldn't drink wine or any alcoholic drink, and she wasn't to eat any forbidden foods. And once she had her child, she was never to cut his hair. He would be dedicated to God, and he would begin to rescue the people. So Samson was born, and God blessed him. So now we go ahead a few years. Samson's all grown up. He met a woman that he wanted to marry. But she was from one of the enemy tribes. They were called the Philistines. And believe it or not, this was all in God's plan. So anyways, as he, went, he and his parents were traveling to meet the woman and her family, a lion attacked Samson. Well, Samson, I can't believe this, but Samson, he ripped the lion's jaws apart and he killed it. But he never said anything to his parents about killing this lion. They must have been on the road and he was in the grass somewhere. So they met the woman and the family. And Samson, yes, he wanted her to be his wife. So the date of the wedding was planned. Well, as Samson traveled back to her place for the wedding, he actually found the carcass of the lion that he killed. A swarm of bees had made honey in the carcass. He ate the honey, and he gave some to his parents to eat, and apparently it tasted really good. Now, I'm not sure that I would really like to have honey that came out of a dead animal, but apparently it was really good. So. The parents of the girl, they appointed 30 groomsmen to Samson to be with him to help him prepare for the wedding. He gave them a riddle. They couldn't figure out the riddle, so they asked his bride to be. And so after much whining and begging and crying, Samson finally told her, and so she told the groomsmen, well, you know what, he got really, really angry actually ended up killing all of the groomsmen. 
not, <laughs> he was quite the strength guy. He was really different. Anyway, sometime later, probably a few years or so, he met Delilah, and he wanted to marry her. Well, the enemies, the Philistines, they went to Delilah, and they said, you know, we need to find out how come Samson is so strong. We don't know how, where he gets his power from. So, you need to find out, ask him, and we will make sure that you're rewarded. Well, she pleaded and she begged. Samson actually told her several wrong answers. And each time the Philistines were outsmarted. Finally, though, Samson had had enough. And he broke down and he told her the right answer. Remember, back at the first, he was never to cut his hair. God had instructed that in order to keep his strength. Well, they cut off, the Philistines cut off his hair. And instantly, Samson was as weak as could be. Then they actually blinded him. They took his eyes out so he couldn't see anything. They threw him in the dungeon. Every so often when they were having a party or whatever was going on, they'd bring him out and they'd make fun of him. What they didn't think of, though, was that Samson, Samson's hair was growing back. One night, they were having this great big huge party and they decided to bring Samson out to make fun of him. They tied him up between two posts. And these posts were the ones that were holding up the building. Well, Samson, he pushed on those posts. He knocked the whole building down. He killed all of the Phil Philistines, and yes, he died as well. But here is what Samson prayed to God just before. Sovereign Lord, remember me again. Oh God, please strengthen me just one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. And he prayed. Let me die with them. See, Samson knew he'd done wrong by telling Delilah the secret of his strength. But God still used him to help the people. And you know what? God can use us today to tell others about Jesus, giving us the strength and the boldness to speak about him. And we are going to have times where we're scared and where we, you know, we don't want to open our mouths. But we need to pray and ask God to give us that strength. So how does this story of Samson and the book of Judges, how does that actually point to Jesus? Well, God sent the judges to rescue Israel. They were able to, and those judges were able to help the people for a short time. But one day... God was going to send Jesus as the ultimate rescuer. The people's rebellion against God continued to get worse, showing that they needed a permanent salvation through Christ. Samson died to save Israel, and that points to Jesus dying to save his people forever. Samson died to save his people. Jesus died to save us. Let's pray. Dear God in heaven, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that Jesus came to save us. I pray for the children this week in school. I pray that everything will go well with them. I pray for their safety. But we thank you, Lord, that you are the one that's in control. We love you. And Lord, we want to serve you in whatever way you call us to. And I just pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I have a verse here that came from Judges. Judges. 21, 25, and it said, In those days, Israel had no king. All the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. They had no rules or regulations. They just did whatever they wanted to do. And they had no king. Today, we have a king. We have Jesus. And we have the book. We have the Bible that tells us what we should and shouldn't be doing. So this week, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about God's Word and what's in that book to tell us and to guide us, okay? All right, you have an awesome week. Don't forget, we're still wearing these, okay? And we're still washing our hands and we're still social distancing. But I know you've got this. You've got it down to a fine art. 
And so anyways, I look forward to seeing you in a few weeks. Um, I'll be back here next week with a lesson. And um, I just uh, hope that you're watching. And I just want you to know that I love you. Okay? I miss you. Take care.